What's going on, everybody? This is Darian with Darian's Creations, and today we're at Bitcoin Now. I have my iPad 2021 M1 chip, yada, 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 beep, bop, beep, bop. And today we're going to open up the app, Art Studio Pro. Many of you know I am a Procreate user primarily, 95, 99% of my stuff is on Procreate, and the other 1% is done on here. As of the last month, I have shifted that to about an honest 70-30 split, 70% Procreate, 30% on uh, Art Studio Pro by Lucky Chan. And today, this, I just opened this. What the hell is this? Oh, okay, so these are things I was drawing, doodling these in the airport and uh, other places where I was at. I'm currently on a uh, TDY or TAD for the military. Um, I remember drawing this bird head. It's completely misproportioned. And a uh, tiger that I just stopped. You know what I mean? And a lot of quick sketches. Another tiger. Holy crap. What's up with this head? Let's, uh, let's, <laughs> let's change the proportions on this thing's head, mind you. Good God. Let's see. That's too small. Maybe that. Nope. I don't know. It was definitely too big before. And uh, now it's not. And this right here was just me getting into a night jar bird, which is essentially a bird that some people think looks like a dragon. And uh, once again, a lot of quick sketches, a lot of quick sketches. And you can't tell where I was going with that with the wings and the body of the breast on that thing. So, uh... That's probably why it looks like half a lizard, horned snake head slash bird slash I don't know what it is. But this is an honest drawing of what I like to do on the app Art Studio Pro. I do enjoy it. When I first downloaded it, I paid more for this app than I ever paid for like a drawing type app. I think when I got Procreate at the time, it was $4.99, maybe $5.99. Now it's 10 or more dollars. Clearly, I already own it, so I don't have to pay for it again. I definitely remember paying 29 or $20, like $19.99 or something like that for this. I do like the fact that I can uh, get whatever's in the cloud on my Mac, on my phone, and on my iPad. So if I save something, it saves to the cloud, it saves, and I can access that same file from another device versus my Procreate files are strictly, that I, all I know of, they are on that device and that's it they do have a cloud backup um but this this is different so i already have this layer open so you can see right here layer seven um it is visible it is selected so not just visible and then layer four selected uh and what happens is you try and do something not that way but let's say trying to draw currently layer is hidden tools only work on visible layers that's a thing that a lot of people run into so making sure that the layer needs to be visible, I can draw on it, or go ahead and select the layer that is visible, number seven. So forgive me, you're going to hear a lot of that, me blowing on my hands type of stuff. I like to just get in here loosey-goosey. You might have heard CSI from somebody like uh, uh, Stan Prokopinko from YouTube, and they talk about C curves, S curves, and straight lines. I do want to talk about drawing a little bit, and a lot of people think drawing should just come natural, and for everybody, it doesn't. Just like singing doesn't come natural for everybody, and neither does running. All three things people can do professional. Now, I understand there are professional writers. There aren't too many professional walkers, and there aren't too many professional talkers, although you can do voiceovers and stuff like that. But most people like to see the extremes of those things, like people who can talk can't sing. So people who can sing actually make a lot more money. Uh, people who can walk necessarily can't run. And there are people who make lots of money running. Same thing when it comes to this analogy of people who can write, physically write. They may have good penmanship, but they can't draw to save their life. And I believe a lot of artists can make money based on what they can do with their hands. So while some people have a natural ability or talent, we call that, a, a knack for these things, Others have to practice it to even get to a, a, le a level of competition, if you will. And so I do like to warm up, right? So if you're better than me at something, naturally, I'm going to listen. You're probably still like, dang, dude, just draw something already. Um, I'm so 
to just pass the time, I'm going to go ahead and, and warm my hand up. So don't think I'm just frivolously scribbling on my iPad, although that's essentially what I'm doing. It's for purpose. It's for me to loosen up my arm, my shoulder, and my eyeball. So as I'm doing this, I'm looking for certain patterns with my eyes just for me to see if I can start and stop a stroke at a specific location, uh, a, a point in space, if you will, on my iPad that I want to do. Because when I'm looking at things, when I'm drawing, I'm actually starting to think like I see I want a line here to there and then I kind of just throw that line really fast. And if I can do it uh, really good, then, you know, hey, good for me. So I will do things like this. You could probably see where I'm going with this and they don't have to match or I'm not doing a specific diamond pattern of anything. I'm just looking for something. And sometimes this alone will inspire me to draw something. Uh, I don't always have a goal to draw something nope. and tends to be birds, cats and people, which is funny. That's what you saw in my layers over here were birds, cats and people. Uh, cats can be anything from a big cat panther to a small tabby cat, uh, birds, anything from eagles, any sort of raptors, raptors, about 90% of my birds to whatever the heck this uh, night jar looking thing was something I just saw. And uh, of course, people, right? I do a lot of body poses. I've done a lot of portraits. However, all of that is in Procreate. I do have some stuff here on Art Studio Pro. Um, if I open this up, you see some random stuff right here. Like I remember I, I drew this uh, like Middle Eastern man wearing a turban, if that's a turban, wearing some sort of headgear. I drew this man uh, maybe just over a year ago. Quick sketch, maybe five to ten minutes max. I drew this and I stopped. I put no other thought into it. I just stopped. And that's something I kind of want people to understand is you can do that. You can have a folder full of things like this. You do not need to finish everything. Now, based on where I was at artistically, that's where I wanted to stop. <sighs> Sorry. If for some reason I, I feel like I got that wild hair at my butt and I want to redraw this, I will redraw it. Or if I want to add to it, I can add to it. Um, I don't want to personally redraw uh, add to this. I would rather just redraw it with the intention to do more shading, add more contrast, have better contour lines than where I was at here. Because for me, this is a snapshot of where I was artistically at that point in time. So I would rather just open up a new layer and do something else. Um, yeah, once again, I have, I have a freaking, so the, yeah, matter of fact, these are some cats that I drew while I, and already this cat right here, uh, specifically this cat, not too happy with the way its head is proportioned to the rest of its body. That head definitely needs to be a lot smaller in proportion to this body. But I drew the head first, so therefore the body must need to be bigger than the head. Um, the other cats, all of these were in the uh, country of Cyprus. Uh, I was in Paphos, Cyprus this past December 2022. And there were lots of cats on that island that were brought over from the British to help with the snake population and all this other crap, blah, blah, blah. A lot of snakes are dead. Still a lot of cats, though. So as I was walking around, I ran into many cats, and I just started uh, to scribble and jot them down. And as you could tell, I used this app and not Procreate. That's why I was stating this app is starting to become a normal uh, thing for me. I've always loved this app. There were times where I didn't understand um, the way, and I still don't understand how all of the layers work. Um, it is easier to do a selection in Procreate at times, but based on what I do, there's another way to skin a cat. Um, the, funny, I'm talking about cats. I just decided to take a different approach to it. I, I, I try to draw with more purpose. I'll go ahead and open this up. If I do want to open it up, I won't open empty. I'll just hit, like you see this recent, so this very first file says 4,800 by 6,000 pixels at 300 pixels per inch. So this is a higher resolution. This is something very good for print if I want it to print. And uh, as you can tell, the background layer is not white. That way, if I need to add actual white highlights in it, I can. I want my background layers to be in the gray scale somewhere in the midtones. And then I don't want a jet black. I want somewhere up in the darker uh, area for my drawings so therefore when I do come in here and I go over something the more I go over it and even if I want that to go a little bit darker 
um, I will, all right? You know, but it could still start off really, really light. And then the, the longer I, I, I do that, actually, it might go a little bit lighter again. So something like that and then go, yeah, okay, so that's that. So I'll go ahead and delete that layer, as you can see right here. I'll go ahead and delete that and put it back. Now, that was my issue before with Procreate and Art Studio Pro. Art Studio Pro, it will allow you, like I just did, I can select the background layer and start drawing on it. And if I draw something on it that's really, really nice, it's on there. I can't move it. I can't really modify it the same. There are ways, like in Photoshop, to fix that or try and get it back. It's much harder, though. So, uh, yeah, I like the fact that you can't F up, if you will, a layer on Procreate because the layer uh, is always selected. So this layer two is actually layer one and layer one, it just says background. So that's a difference. Let me go ahead and start drawing random stuff. Um, it's not going to work the best for me right now. I will come back to this. I need to go take my laundry. I'm still on a... Uh, uh, work type environment. So I need to go get my laundry out or at least put my laundry out of the washer, put it in the dryer, come back, and then I'll, I'll start to sketch a little bit. And you guys can see my process on how I use this app specifically since people have been intrigued by it. So I'm going to set that there for now and I will see you guys in just a second. Peace. Okay, I'm back. Sorry for that delay. I know the, the video shifted a little bit as far as where the camera was. And guess what? Who cares? So this is what I do. I still have the same app open. And I will open up uh, Pinterest. Who cares what they recommend me? They recommend me all kinds of junk. has to do with animals, portraits, people, uh, birds. You'll probably see a bird somewhere. Oh, that's an ugly-ass bird. But it's a bird, right? And so... I... <laughs> Don't, don't know why they send me pictures of dudes. But uh, either way, it's a FOSA. Um, some things I've drawn before for different anatomy studies. Um, I'm into fitness. I work out a lot. So that's probably why I got a lot of dudes right now. I don't know. Oh, what the flip? Uh, I have drawn this before. This lady in pink. <sighs> Ronnie Coleman over here. Mr. Olympia, never drawn him, never drawn this girl, but I I had a thing uh, where I was drawing a lot of people with tattoos, so it makes sense for her. Either way, I'm just going to type in birds, right, and <clears throat> I'll look for inspiration. Obviously, birds are very simple creatures. This is, oh, look at that. See, I get recommended. This fluffy little dragon is actually a bird. Um, yeah, like I said, it's called a night jar. So that peregrine falcon on full swoop, I don't know. I kind of just scroll, and I don't know. I suggest you do the same thing. You can do it on Google Images, Pinterest, whatever. I like the fact that this app specifically allows me to, you know, kind of just split screen whatever it is I want to do. I actually don't know what the heck this is, but I like it. And so I can come in here and, and do this. And yes, I can do this with a Google image or something else, but it's it's an app specifically. And anytime that you like, let's say, go to a different part, let's say I zoom in on this eye, the bottom of my actual uh, screen is going to change. And if it's going to recommend something that's similar to it. So like this other weird looking same type of bird on the bottom left, if I open that, which I might actually just draw this thing a little bit more or at least sketch it in because I do I do kind of like that head. On this thing, um, hold on. I need to get lotion. My hands are my hands are too dry. That's why I keep blowing hot air in my hands to get them kind of moist because they're just super dry right now. I'm in Florida uh, to support a NASA space launch, a manned space launch, I should say, and uh, yeah. Just holding a really dry Apple Pencil isn't helping. So that's that. Although it does help for my screen protector, I do have the paper light screen protector. It does feel like I'm drawing on actual paper for those of you guys who haven't heard that a thousand times. I'm looking initially at just this creature, right? And let me go ahead and change the uh, angle of my iPad. I like to start off with a ball or a circle. And I'm not talking about just like a straight ball 
uh, even though I kind of will do something like that, I'm going to keep it closer towards the center of my actual uh, page. Um, you know, and I'll do something like this really loose. It doesn't have to be a perfect circle. I kind of despise perfect circles at this point in my life. And if I want to use the back of this like feather, almost said hair right here, like that little angle, excuse me, then I'll, I'll, I'll do that just so you kind of understand my visualization as to what I'm actually thinking. Um, so let me just do that. And then I will take another small circle and in the center of this, I'll kind of just do this little like, this is where the eye is going to go. Now I know the eye has this little like pitch down thing here, here, and these are straight lines by the way that I'm, I'm doing. And then same sort of thing here. Now, obviously I'm going to have to scale some things at times and, and that's fine. Um, this is a little bit of a C curve or S curve. All right, it kind of has this little bit of an S shape to it, and then it stops. And then, you know, because you see the other side of whatever the hell this thing is on, on this bird. And then that's that. Now, when I get to this point, I do notice right in between the eye and this blue crap, um, it kind of just comes down like this. Right, and then it, it significantly drops off. Let me erase some of that. Kind of comes down like that, and then it significantly drops off. And if I was to look at this little throat looking spot to the bottom of the beak and I was to go straight out like somewhere like this, I know that it's going to be somewhere on this plane. So let's just say I kind of do that and just leave it. And that's what earlier was for when I was just doing little stuff like this and seeing if I can connect little dots and going back and forth. That's what that little exercise for me. That's what that was for. Uh, not everybody does that, and I understand why. Not everybody's me. Um, that's that. And I do know it's going to have to come back down to it. Or something like this. Um, Uh, at the eye area, I'm just going to put this little, like this crest or this hood or whatever, whatever this thing is called. I'm, I wouldn't be shocked just based on how animals have parts names that it's some sort of crest, crested bird, crested macaw, crested, uh, whatever the hell it is. And right now I'm just literally roughing in just some, some random hair feathers I call them hair feathers because it looks like just some hair to me, but I understand that it's feathers. Uh, going from this big blue throaty looking junk to where I want these little, um, I'll just kind of rough in some natural looking, just some lines like this to kind of give it that pattern that that beak has. I will put that there. I notice it's about the same length as the top of the head to the bottom of the, like this crested part to the, from the red to blue, let's just call it red to blue on this thing. It's about the same distance. So as I'm looking at that, I can either do this with my fingers to measure and kind of just do this and notice like the bottom of this little area right here is possibly where I want this little swooping motion to come down. I know it comes up into like more of a U like this. Uh, around here, let's just kind of, now what I'm doing is just, this is just my style of drawing. There's no right way to do it. This is my way to do it. And that's where I'll do that. I kind of see that there's some, uh, some stuff here like that. A little bit of, uh, feathers, the black feathers are coming out of that side. And I do notice the bottom of the, the beak, not the beak, good Lord, I'm getting my anatomy on birds messed up. The eyeball on this is actually completely vertical almost with that foot. So if I wanted to do something like this and put a straight line, I won't do that. Procreate is much easier um, if I want it to scale something. But that's just what, that's what I'm looking for as I'm drawing. 
is like you have to measure things. So I understand also at that foot is the the body, right? So the body of this bird, um, yes, you can still measure the body of the bird by measuring with your pencil or something else uh, to scale. You can even kind of hold them up like this next to each other. And this will sometimes help if you kind of just see, you know, and then with the pencil or something like that, you kind of just move it down slowly. And you'll notice that certain points may actually be hit at the same time or revealed at the same time. And uh, I can tell you right now, this body is too long um, just based on that alone. Maybe, maybe not. I know the beak is shorter. The beak can definitely come out a lot further, a lot more, probably to about right here, maybe a little closer. And these are just some ways that I will actually do it. And so hopefully people understand this is just how Darian does it, right? At Darian's Creations. Now I like to, uh, and I don't know what that is either. It's still a rough for me. So I'll leave it. Um, the body of this bird, like I said, I don't know too much about this bird species in particular. And honestly, I don't know very much about very many bird species. Let's just be honest. Um, the only bird species I know about come with a bun in between them or they come with some mayonnaise and ketchup. That's my extent of bird knowledge is what they taste good with. And so... But they are beautiful creatures. I think they're some of the most colorful, amazing creatures in the world. And I love them with hot sauce. Um, now, this isn't anatomically correct right here. I am just doing whatever feels natural at this point, And that's exactly what I should be doing, at least in my opinion, because it is my video. Um, let's do something like this. Now, I'm just kind of trying to draw more straight lines. I'm not trying to get it completely right, at least not yet. And I might not get it right at all. And that's just me being honest. Um, I might not get it right at all. I have drawn some pretty things that I personally was impressed with myself. Like I drew that, you know, but, uh, for the most part, it's just like, it's, it's whatever to me at times. Um, now, I'm, I'm literally roughing in a lot of this, and rightfully so. I shouldn't try and do anything too elaborate. That's where you get lost in the sauce. And, uh, but I just need to finish certain things for me to want to mentally move on uh, with the rest of this sketch. And this is a sketch. Now, also looking at the body, I'm going to go ahead and transform this and move it a little bit more. Uh, like that and probably up a little bit because I do see those uh, tail feathers um, and I, I kind of want to capture them a little bit so from like this claw area it does essentially come straight down and then it, you know kind of tapers off over here uh, really really different type of bird than anything I'm used to and uh, yeah that's that bird has a different story. So if, if that's what I wanted to do, like I said, I know this wing somehow comes down. Uh, it should at least, at least on paper. In my head, it should come down. And it might not. But just something like this to me is where I'll be like, hmm, that's kind of birdish. Right, and then I get excited, personally. And then I decide I want to draw it a little bit better. So I'll take this layer two, I'll hit it like I just did. So let me back up a little bit. So the layer tab in the upper right, I'll hit the layer tab and the opacity, I can go ahead and mess with that now. I'll kind of leave it in the 60 to 70 range, depends on how dark I pushed on my initial sketch. And I'll do something like that. I'll hit the plus button, add a layer on top of it. Now, what I'm actually using is called crayon. So if I was to actually show you this, uh, like where the brush is, I'm in the pencil section and I'm at the very bottom, third from the bottom, crayon. And it just works well for me. I've used a lot of the other brushes and I can still use them, but something about the crayon. 
Uh, so now that I have this, I kind of go in here and I can get a little bit more detailed as far or defined. I got to make sure I, I adjust my brush setting. I can get a little bit more defined with this and get a little bit more anatomy correct if I have it. If you don't have the anatomy down in your head, you just straight up don't have it. And that's that's fine too, I guess, right? Because we're all here to learn. Uh, I'm no professional at this. I, I'm a Navy helicopter dude, right? I know how to jump out of an airplane, shoot guns from an aircraft, uh, stuff like that. That's That's what I get paid for, right? I don't get paid for this. I have fun with this so much, I would not mind getting paid for it. But as of right now, it is just something that uh, piques my interest. I have been paid to do art before. So some of these things, uh, for sure, I will definitely do. I might go ahead and post this up on my Instagram account too. If you want to go ahead and follow that, please do. Um, I, I think I said that last time on another video and I never did it. Um, matter of fact, if someone on Instagram asked me, am I up for commission work? And while the answer is like yes and no, it really depends on what it is. I'm not going to do anything that would be against my motives. Uh, anything I, I feel is immoral to me, um, which isn't very much of like what I draw. I've never been asked to draw something that would be completely like just demonic or... Um, you know, just evil, in my opinion. But uh, some guy asked me if I wanted to do uh, some stuff for his daughter's pet, um, which uh, I was just like, what's that supposed to mean? Like, you want me to draw a dog? You know what I mean? Like, a cat? I mean, I didn't understand fully kind of what he was getting at. I wouldn't be surprised if he's one of the subscribers, one of my 13 subscribers to this channel. <laughs> what's up, dude? Um, yeah, and so, like... And then right here too, and like right above the eye, I see some more like feather hairish follicles that kind of go into this little crested piece, at least for me. And so I'm not going to do too much with that right now, um, but I will kind of throw some harder lines in this crest. And uh, I, I'm also freestyling my own kind of design of it based on what I feel this, this would look like. Um, I can see right here that maybe it was damaged at some point during its little uh, life, right? And then uh, you can see I'm pushing pretty hard on this. And uh, yeah, maybe it's not the best idea, but for me at this point in my uh, art journey, it is. Because then I'm going to attempt to color it and I absolutely hate coloring my drawings now. I used to love it. I like, absolutely love it. When I was a kid, I whip out a coloring book and I would color and I thought I was pretty decent at it. I probably sucked, but I, I, I just had fun doing it. And now that I'm an adult and I'm trying to take art a little bit more serious, I don't have fun with it as much anymore. Uh, and that's just me being completely honest. I do not have fun coloring my drawings. And, uh, yeah, so hopefully you guys can see it start to take some sort of shape um, of whatever this is. I hope my, uh, my laundry doesn't get done by the time I'm done messing with this. Now this bird is definitely very beautiful to me um, in the color, the colorization. I would have to come in here and to start messing with it a little bit more and adding these uh, these colors. I could even see the shadow in the beak where it drops off into the mouth, even though that's kind of, I guess, where the beak and the mouth kind of go, right? They kind of go together. Uh, matter of fact, that eye split or slit or whatever, it it is still parted by this beak. Now this is where I'm gonna kind of try and come in here and give this beak a little bit of detail, a little bit of the cracks. If I can find any cracks to put in this beak or or something like that. And, and at this point I can literally just get rid of the other layer, but I obviously am tracing my own layer. So when people say, oh, you shouldn't trace. Yeah, you should, as long as it's yours. Um, and it just helps me out. You know, I can kind of do 
a little bit finer sketch um, instead of, I don't even know what I'm doing right now. I'm not even looking at the bird. It just helps me, I guess, get more confident. Like there's a crawl, walk, run face to life. And this is just my phase of how I actually get involved to art. So I can tell right now this beak is already giving me a challenge and I don't like it. But I kind of get it. Kind of get it. I don't get it. But that's what makes this my bird, you know? Uh, so, so yeah, either way, I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna kinda come in here. Like I said, I know I'm, I know I'm pushing harder than usual, and that's not normal for me to do. I normally don't push that hard uh, when I'm doing a, draw, a drawing of any sort like this. But because of the nature of what I'm drawing and I'm trying to show people just one of many ways that I approach a certain drawing, um, that's why I'm doing it this way. Um, I understand feathers don't look like straight lines, but if, as long as you can understand what I'm doing right now and, and my methodology to this right here, then I'm fine, right? I don't really care. Uh, definitely not a perfectionist with this right now. And I'm definitely pushing much harder on these for the obvious reason that I want the black and the feathers to kind of pop a little bit more. So I will push on this a little bit harder than normal, at least just to give it that distinction right there. That alone is enough for me. I will go ahead and kind of... Like I said, I know this bird has uh, different colorizations in that. So I'll kind of separate that now. Um, at least that's just me. And uh, let me not push so hard again. And and that's that's what I would do with this. Now, let's see, let's see. I cannot see this bird's, like, feather, like where it actually goes at all. And this is where people will say, understand the anatomy of something and your anatomy knowledge. If you know a certain topic well enough, you can actually fill in the gaps with what you've learned through art studies, reading books, studying these creatures live. And you just know like, oh, they all have this right here. This is how their wing looks, you know, blah, blah, blah. This is what they look like at a three quarter view because you've drawn it over and over and over again. Um, I have not had that luxury the same. And that's fine. And I think I've done okay for somebody who hasn't studied a lot of different animal anatomy. Um, I don't try to draw the animal anatomically correct all the time. I try and just see if I can feel the shapes I'm watching through the reference image, the reference video, whatever it may be. And uh, I have a lot more fun that way than people who kind of just become a slave to every line in their reference. I do tend to be a slave to my reference sometimes, but not to every single line. Like right now, I'm just kind of freestyling these feet. And uh, I do look over to make sure I'm not drawing a human foot after a while. But uh, you know what I mean? I just kind of think like, hmm. Maybe this line right here can can be a little bit more like that from my last time drawing an eagle talon or something. And, uh, you know, I just kind of come in here and just do my thing. And I have fun doing it. And that is the number one reason I got back into art in the first place is I actually started to have fun again. When it stopped being fun, I quit. And I think anybody will will tell you the same. Any job, um, the minute it stops being fun, if you have an opportunity to stop, you will. Because your reason to start is gone, right? If it was, 
It could even be for a shallow reason. Like I know people who, there are some people I'm subscribed to on YouTube who only became artists uh, online because they wanted to be famous. And I personally don't think there's anything wrong with that. It may not be the right probably way for everyone, but for that person, that's exactly what they needed to get, uh, you know, to light a fire. And that very individual is famous from a YouTube standpoint um, in the art community and all over Instagram. And they they even uh, surpassed some of the people that they followed when they were just sitting at home watching videos um, because they 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 strove for greatness and they achieved it. So it's it's going to be hard. What the heck am I doing with this other foot? This other claw? See, like, I don't even know what I'm doing right now. That's just a... Uh, yeah, but from here, I bet you can't tell. And that's the whole point. And that, my friend, is how you draw a crested, feathered creature with Darien. Um, and it is kind of weird, too. You know, you do some sort of digital art and somebody will say, well, the beak isn't the same and this isn't that and blah, blah, blah. And it's not. But then they don't realize, oh, I just started drawing, like, you know, seriously six months ago. Now, not me, but for the certain people. And, the, and then you notice, like, in six months, that's a that's one hell of a jump from in, in your talent. And it's like, yeah, but yeah, you're over here criticizing my beak or, you know, the eye or something that's like, yeah, it's going to look bad. But if I'm confident enough to post anything... I, I have to like it first, initially, enough, enough to take criticism. Now, when I post things online, I get pissed off because a lot of people will, will criticize the very part I specifically call out on myself and say, hey, look, I rushed this part on purpose for this reason. What do you guys think about the rest of it? And they'll still comment on the part I literally told them. I kind of don't care for them to comment because I already did it myself in, in the description. So... That could be a little nerve wracking at times where you're just like, look, damn it. That's not what I was asking you. Um, but I get it. You know, some people will read it and hate on you anyway, or they won't read it, which is another problem with humanity. And then they'll still hate on you. So, uh, you know, you gain some, you lose some. So there goes that. These little... Um, uh, streaks, these little face thingy majiggers. Um, I don't know. I'm just gonna do that. <laughs> and I'm gonna do this, and then I'm gonna do that, and then maybe another stripe-looking thing down its face. And just some other stuff over here. J just for that. And so, to me, that's that bird. I don't even know what the hell it is. This is that bird. Let me get rid of some of these uh, questionable lines down here. So you can at least hope to know it's perching on something tangible. Because birds don't fly in the sitted position like this, looking perched. Um, cool thing about tree branches and stuff, they can never be as thick or as thin and say, oh, it doesn't look as thick or thin. It's like, dude, they're all thick and thin equally together. And so for me, this is where I normally would stop a drawing and say, yep, I'm done here. For, but for you, that's probably not enough. So w leaving that bottom layer, as you can see right here, it's gone now. But leaving it up sometimes helps me out. And sometimes it doesn't. Whoops, I'm going to leave it up. And then I'm going to select the, the actual bottom layer and put... A layer underneath it and this time it's going to be a base color so it's not going to have um matter of fact it could even still be like a gray like a darker gray uh lighter than the background darker than the sketch and at this point i'm going to go to this right here not the brush not the uh, pencil part so you have the eraser the pencil and then like an art brush and select this and then what is this one Baron Dante air. I don't know what that is. Let me go ahead and put that in there. I like it. So let's move. Yep. I like the fact that it's, uh, I can go over it again and it doesn't get darker or, or 
anything like that with it. So we'll see what happens with this. Um, this needs to be much bigger for me. Okay, there we go. Maybe too big. Um, so when it comes to, matter of fact, I'm just gonna go ahead and do the majority of this bird's, um, or the bulk of its body. Including the white part right here um, and the feathers that took me some time to get used to. Um, there's going to be moments where you're definitely going to want to clean it up and, you know, probably get in there a little bit and, you know, not not hit everything with a broad brush. Nothing against it. It's just a little bit more tedious. And this is one of the many things I'll do to speed up time in certain areas instead of me trying to trace with, you know, something too too big like like right now for instance let's say I, I hit all this up with a bigger brush and then i'll hit my eraser i'll double tap it real quick and then just kind of clean up some of the areas outside the lines it may be easier to clean up areas outside the lines than to try and paint or uh or put color in the lines uh so yes i'm gonna get the talons i'm gonna get the little feet um i don't need to clean all of that up too much although I still do, and it's just for me. So let's say right now I have this, and I'll just go ahead and clean up that part of the branch. Now that I'm in here, I'll be a little bit more tedious with that, and uh, not that tedious. And the only reason I'm doing this, and then as I'm over here, I, I do notice that, hey, not all of this part is uh, you know, good to go, if you will. Um, so what say you let me know in the comment section how you guys actually do things I'm very curious now if you're at a specific level on on this YouTube thing you're probably not going to watch me and rightfully so because you're probably way too big or you're bored as hell so Uh, once again, kind of coming in here and I learned this part right here, this technique, I'm sure other artists are, are, they've done it, but any of the artists I follow is not as old, not in a bad way, but as good as Aaron blaze. Now he's the Disney animator. If you're watching me, you probably should have watched him or you know who he is. And, uh, yeah. Aaron Blaze is my art hero outside of Stan Prokopinko. I've learned a lot from both of those gentlemen in completely different ways. Like, matter of fact, certain things I learned from Stan Prokopinko, uh, Aaron Blaze will straight up say, do that. That thing Stan told you not to do, do it anyway. And then I ask myself, like, well, Stan just said don't do it. But when I look at both of their art, I kind of figure like I emulate more of Aaron Blaze's style. Now, I'm not saying I'm him at all, but I, I just kind of get in there real rough, real loose. I have more fun that way. Art became fun for me again through that. And then it became more practical through Stan Prokopenko's approach. I try to make strokes intentional on the first go round because of him. So now that that's there... I can go ahead and lock this. You can either hit, um, so like, so you can select this layer. It's not even letting me do it the way I want to. Either way, so I can go ahead and do that. And then where it says lock, I can lock the position, the transparency, or the pixels. So you'll see the little lock icon on the side of it, meaning now I can't do anything over here. Um, but then, so let's just say I take this red and I want to I wanna hit Nope, wait, where am I at? Where am I at? Nope. Nope. No, no, no. I don't want to do either one of those. I lied. Clipping mask. So I want to do a clipping mask, and then this will be on the bottom of that layer, which I don't want. So let's go ahead and unclip that. I'm going to put a layer above it. So I can go ahead and rename this. Um, let's just put base color. Uh, show keyboard, base color, excuse me. And then I will put, now I'm gonna select the visible layer and clip that. 
So clipping mask, so on the bottom of it, uh, I can't draw here as you can hear, and the, but I can go straight across. So I can do all kinds of weird stuff. It'll only color on the clipping mask, uh, which is pretty much adding stuff on whatever is selected on the bottom. So looking at this bird right here, no shadows, no highlights are done, and I still have no clue what I'm doing. And that's okay. Right? That's what you guys are here for. Tell me how wrong I did it. So let's see. Ooh, I like that. Uh, let's start with this crest. And once again, I understand it's not necessarily the most correct. I am gonna go over certain areas that you could say like, well, this area is, you went over it with this color and whatever. And I'm just gonna kind of look and uh, adjust as needed for me. I understand certain colors um, don't go well. Stand by people, stand by people, I'm getting a call. I think that's the majority of that color specifically. Uh, so yeah, you can see where I'm going with this. I kind of come down here, I see a little bit of this sort of color. Let's just go ahead and wrap that around the eye. I'll do the whole eye with it for now. A little bit down here. Kind of take some of it underneath this chin into this little weird spot. And I'll leave it there for now. Then I'm going to add some purplish-ish to it. Um, kind of over here. Nothing is blended yet. I'm literally just dropping a base color or the local color of what I see with no light. At least that's how Aaron told me. That's what Aaron Blaze said, and, and, I, and I believe him. So um, that's that. So if you can see right there, like that's kind of where I'm going with that. Um, so this red right here, if I want to select that, and then I want to go a little bit lighter, uh, kind of more in the brown area. In this in this kind of area right here and maybe maybe it needs to go a little darker maybe a little lighter not sure not sure at the moment but uh yeah clearly black or really really dark I'll just say that um, you know I mean, somewhere along the lines of this. Um, and that's that, kind of coming in here. Ooh, people. Um, let's go with this, but a little bit lighter. And then I'm just gonna add some of this for now. Now this is still without any texture, any color, any lighting, just stuff. Um, now I can still accidentally go over another spot and that's always uh, an option if you need to. But for now, um, just by looking at it like this, I'm going to go ahead and select an off-white color right here for the tail feather um, that I'm starting to see. And uh, kind of just uh, leave it be for now. Now, this is my little side-by-side -side comparison before I start getting into the nitty-gritty of it and trying to make it look a little bit more fully bird-like. And uh, yeah. That's that for me for now. I'm gonna call it right now on this. I may come back to it. I may just leave that, this alone and come back to it later so you can see me finish whatever or quit, stop whenever I'm ahead because I do have to return a phone call and I do have to get back to work-ish. So either way, I'm gonna do that now. This is Darian with Darian's Creations. Let me know what you think of the video and I will release the second part. And I'm out, peace.